Hello and welcome everybody. This will be the fifth episode of Merlini's Mailbag. And I have an intro prepared, but I haven't actually imported it to YouTube yet. That should be ready for next week's episode. And I'm still working on the logo, but again, expect more production value very shortly. So the first question that I received was about Tranquil Boots. And here's a question. Here's my main question. How do you feel about the current state of Tranquil Boots? Tranquils were added in 6.73 and seem to be ideal for poor support heroes. They're very cheap, provide a heal, and give a significant movement speed increase. However, lately they've they have they have become very popular among agility carry heroes like Luna, Phantom Lancer, and even Anti Mage. They give a lot of staying power to heroes that would have trouble keeping up in difficult lanes of farming the jungle early game. Or farming the jungle early game. Do you think that this is balanced? If not, how do you think they could be changed without making it much more difficult for heroes who depend on them, such as Axe? Thanks for reading. So when uh, Trinkle Boots initially came out, which is a 6.73, I believe, which this guy said, uh, I initially thought it was only for supports as well. It's like 450 plus a really cheap ring of regen, which you can buy from the side shop, so that's 800, and then on top of that, 175 from a ring protection. It like provides a lot for having no recipe cost, and usually like when you get this much benefit from an item, you at least have a recipe cost. Even Soul Ring has like a very small recipe cost for the um, for the benefit that it provides for the active. But Trinkle Boots notably does not have any have any uh, recipe. So I'll go over the benefits of Trinkle Boots and what it actually provides for. Not even having a recipe. So, like, Ring of Protection only gives 2 armor, and Ring of Regeneration gives 2 HP a second. But you'll notice, if, as I hover over tooltip, it says 3 armor and 3 HP regeneration. So, from spending nothing extra, you already get 1 armor and 1 free regener HP regeneration, which is not nothing. I mean, there could at least be, like, a 125 Soul Ring res or recipe cost, like Soul Ring. And you also get move speed. You get 25 move speed, which is nothing to scoff at. And there's, there is the passive, if you take damage 4 times in 10 seconds, it becomes regular boots, and you don't get the move speed bonus, etc, etc, but it's still a very powerful item. And there's a reason why you don't see people get like Vanguard anymore, because you simply just don't need it with Tranquil Boots. I did a little bit of the math before, and the active heal provides 175 HP over 40 seconds, and or 175 HP every 40 seconds, so they're not over 40 seconds. It happens over 10 seconds, but you can use the active ability every 40 seconds. And this equates to 255 HP over 60 seconds. And the passive heal, which is 3 HP a second, equates to 180 HP regen a minute. If you add both of those up for the total regen provided, you actually get 435 HP over 60 seconds, which is 7.25 HP regen per second and this is only for 975 gold and that's only just the hp heal so like why would anyone get a ring of health like there's no reason why you need a ring of health because unless you want to build a battle fury for more farming but for like staying in lane five hp regen a second is nothing compared to tranquil tranquil boots gives 435 over a minute and ring of health also only gives 300 and like that's and that's passive too if you like take damage from a nuke or whatever uh where whenever you're in lane getting harassed then you can just pop your triangle boots and the ring of health doesn't really give you that flexibility and that's only like the cost efficiency part of it and you can also dissemble it later like if you buy phase boots or you buy power treads bot's like you can't you can't disassemble these at all. I don't actually know why you can't disassemble them, but it actually does make a difference that you can't disassemble them. Notice as I right click over all of them, it says showing shop or sell. But for um, tranquil boots, you can disassemble them, and that makes a big deal when you want to transition into boots of travel later if it's like a really late game or if you're like phantom lancer and you want to keep pushing out every lane but it is a little bit ridiculous that they're really cheap and you can disassemble them later for like almost no gold loss you can turn the ring of regeneration into a um you can turn a ring of regeneration into a four staff later a mag a pipe if you want to you can turn the ring of protection into a vladimir's offering a ring of aquila if you're a jilly carry such as uh 
PL or Luna or Gyrocopter even for that extra mana in lane and all these contribute to Tranquil Boots being gotten on a wide range of heroes, not just poor support heroes who can't afford any better. And uh, I was talking about this with Claire Voyant quite a while ago, and he said that these green boots, he calls them green boots, which I do sometimes too. Um, I think it's much easier to say than Tranquil Boots, but green boots should be nerfed because they're just way too popular, and they're just gotten on everybody. They're gotten on melee carries, range carries, they're gotten on supports, they're gotten for mid heroes. They're gotten for like utility heroes like Darkseer and the amount of benefits that it provides is just way way too cost effective and not to mention you can dissemble them. So like a very common build for he heroes that require a lot of mana, for example Phantom Lancer and um, Darkseer, you just go Soul Ring and Tranquil Boots and there's like almost nothing they can do to like push you out of lane, which is a little bit absurd. Um, and on top of that, like you don't you don't need you don't need to spend money on consumables. Like notice, like most AMs who save farm, they like rush tranquils, and then after tranquil boots, they can go for like the d damage items with the battle fury. They don't even need the perseverance to stay in lane because they have tranquil boots. And that combined with like a stout shield just like makes it nigh impossible to harass melee heroes out of lane. And that's why you see a lot of the uh, popular melee farmers like. Again, Phantom Lancer anti mage because those are really, really popular and competitive. Just get soul, ring, um, just get Tranquil Boost all the time. And I mean, I think it's a, it's a little bit broken. Uh, it's not like totally game breaking. I don't think that this is what Ice Frog like meant um, for when he like implemented Tranquil Boost because melee already has a lot of like early game benefits that range heroes don't they have like increased xp from denies which is actually pretty big and they have stout shield to help prevent harass they have quelling blade to help uh farm creeps and they already have like a fair amount of benefits and this is uh, like a relic from an old age when like you almost never saw melee heroes in lane because you would just get harassed to death and there was nothing you could do about it you just have to spend obnoxious amounts of money on regen and you would just take such a huge hit from the laning phase or the enemy would just get a huge advantage from the laning phase that it was pretty much just unviable to pick melee heroes and with like the recent changes or not recent changes but changes to like xp uh, experience range nerf for melee heroes as well as implementation of tranquil boost and stout shield and vanguard and all those good items uh like we see melee heroes a lot now which is good and i don't mind that but again tranquil boots too much flexibility too cheap uh, you can dissemble it if you like regret your choice later only for like if you sell your ring of protection you lose like 87 gold that's like two creeps which is nothing and if you sell your ring of region again 175 gold if you that's how much gold you lose which is I don't know it's 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 too strong and this was discussed a few months ago but there haven't been like huge significant um, buffs here and there lately ever since like the drow and uh, centaur patch it's really just been like small balance and tweaks here and there so I do expect them to be nerfed just because they're they're just way too way too popular now and um, I guess <laughs> that's all I all I'll say on Tranquil Boots um, so for the next one Hey, Mel Merlini. I was about to say Melrini because I actually used that on one of my Smurf accounts and I saw some guy with the name The Real Melrini and I just thought that was hilarious. So I tend to say Melrini when I mean Merlini a lot of the times. Anyways, hey Merlini. I had a question about a forgotten hero as of late. Broodmother. I personally have never seen her in competitive play or even played on any live stream. Is she underrated? And what do you think she needs to be picked? What do you think she needs to be picked more often? Best regards. Um, so after watching the G League finals, and I think most of the Dota community watched it, uh, but if you did not, the theme was, it was a, a best of five series, and it actually went to four games, and the theme was pretty much Caudal Peel. Caudal Peel just, just won two games, although one of them they were close to losing, like, the hero variety is not that great anymore, and it is... The uh, game has certainly shifted away from what it was before, which was like mostly two, two in top lane, two in mid lane, two in bottom lane, where like dual lanes would face off versus other dual lanes, and and now it's shifted to like three one one, 
and sometimes not even one three three one zero with one in the jungle and this has uh, like a profound impact on the hero selection and the problem with brood is that first firstly she got nerfed a lot so like spawn spiderlings the spiderlings don't provide four notice it says count one two three three it used to provide four at level seven but now it doesn't or level four rather uh, but not anymore and on top of that they just provide obnoxious amounts of bounty and gold and it's really easy to kill them they have like such low hp if you have like one decent nuke you can just finish them off or if you're an awesome hero like uh dark seer you pretty much just can't even touch uh touch dark seer with a melee hero with brood mother especially with tranquil boots uh, you can't you can't out harass them anymore, and if you want to go mid like I do sometimes with Broodmother, you can't harass them down because they have Bottle Crow. Like any decent solo mid hero like Storm Spirit or Magnetar, they have the potential to Bottle Crow, and they have good AOE to deal with uh, Broodmother spam. And even something like TA has pseudo AOE, and again the Bottle Crow spam just makes her mid pretty unviable, and she doesn't really have any chasing room with webs. The neutral camps are fairly far away to access as opposed to like here and you can just whoop, send them one screen away uh, to farm, and especially if you're on Dire for Broodmother because she really does rely on uh, the, the jungle farm for Broodmother to catch up and experience the levels because she's easily zoned out. Like uh, a hero such as like Furion or uh, Scylla Bear, let's say, like what they do is they run all the way down here and they like intercept the creep wave in between the t1 and the t2 tower and this is very common with offlaners you can also do it with bounty hunter but it's a little bit more risky because you actually have to bring your hero there but what they do uh which the creep wave was spawned in five seconds and i'll show you is that they just drag the creep wave from here to their tower and they get a free wave and pretty much free level two and that's actually really really important especially for someone like darkseer darkseer he can get easily zoned out at level one because he doesn't really have any offensive potential because he can't get ion shell if he's forced into a defensive position so they pull the creep up here and they just drag him all the way um you can do this with your silver bear or with fury on treants but getting that level two is actually really really important but with darkseer if you have level two you can have ion double ion shell on creeps which is extremely hard to counter and you have surge in case they do go on you and not that many combinations of heroes have enough damage and enough stun to keep Darkseer from running away at level 1. And Broodmother, all he has at level 1 is invisibility, which is easily countered by sentries, and some increased move speed. Although it is passive and not active like Darkseer's, it's still very easy. Like, you can just plop a sentry right in the middle of all this and just n completely nullify his invisibility and move speed because you can just zone him out from this area. And, like, uh, what Brood the Mother does, almost any other hero does better. If you want a late game carry, you can use Syllabare, you can use Clinks, you can even use like Bounty Hunter, you can use uh, Weaver, and all, most all of them have like better staying potential than them. Like uh, I've seen Bounty Hunter just like sit right here in this area and they just like leech experience when the creep is right here and like usually the creeps won't see you like this because they'll just pop invis and but problem with broodmother is if you want to go invis here they, they know where you are there's like no secret and the trees don't respawn for five minutes so there's like the, the jig is up you you can't just stay in lane sneakily like a bounty hunter or even a weaver for that matter um also like he uh Broodmother is actually pretty good for push lineups and like creating space for your other heroes to farm. But the problem with that is, why wouldn't you just use Furion? Because Fur uh, Furion, also known as Nature's Prophet, can pull. He can pull from here using the Treants without putting himself in danger. You don't want to feed more. You don't want to feed any more golden experience to the safe lane carry than they already are. So than they already are going to get. So you really don't want to put yourself or expose yourself to any or any sort of danger. So like you you can pull your Treants over here. It's very hard to kill two Treants. They have like 500 plus HP each. So combined 1,000 HP. Level one heroes can't do 1,000 damage that fast. So you just pull them all the way from over here, all the way to like around this area where you're really close to your tower and then you can get experience and some farm that way and Furion's range but uh, aside from that he's way better at split pushing because he can be anywhere every 20 seconds uh, also he's way better at ganking too he's like he makes your other lane stronger because he has his ultimate at level 6 and because he can like 
TP behind the tower and just like summon Trinians to tank for you while you tower dive someone, not to mention the right click, right click power and the sprout. So like Furion does like the split push better and he can gank. And he has better global presence with uh, his ultimate as well. And Broodmother can't do any of that. Like, he has webs, but it's not like you can teleport from one web to another. Uh, there is a hero in Heroes of New Earth that can do that, that, which would actually make Brood really, really cool. But regardless, Broodmother can't do that. He has, like, pretty limited mobility, even though he has webs. Especially if you need a lane switch, because Furions are like, okay, if this lane's, like, a sacrificial lane, he can just move on to the jungle, uh, just do these small camps with his treants. But, like, Broodmother at level 1, like, what are you going to do with just spin web? Are you going to, like, take out huge camps with your plus 2 HP regen a second? I mean, that's not really possible. And uh, you won't have webs in your lane anymore, so it'll be really obvious when you come back to lane. And... Uh, she's just not really flexible anymore and again she also requires a BKB you have to get a BKB on Broodmother and competitive she can't do anything in teamfights without BKB because even with BKB she still gets owned but without BKB she just gets demolished like she'll just take way too much AoE damage she doesn't have that great HP gain um, she doesn't have any like burst heal she has to be attacking to lifesteal from insatiable hunger uh, Broodlings just don't do anything in a team fight because there's so much AoE going around. And for example, one hero, Magnetar, Magnetar can just absolutely crush Brood. And like, you just you just can't do anything about it. If you're close to Magnetar, you'll just get RP'd. And if you're not close to him, and or you use Broodlings, you'll just get Shockwave down. And uh, on top of that, there's Skewer to worry about and Empower Cleave, and it's just really difficult for Broodmother and a lot of melee heroes to do anything versus. The powerhouse that is Magnetar, or even like the Nakes, let's say, like, what's a Broodmother gonna do versus Nakes? Incapacitating Bite does not work against, um, does not work against BKB units or Rage, and again, Spawn Spiderlings just, just don't do anything, they're all gonna die to AoE, and Incapacitating Bite is not that good. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like, Feast would do more damage, like, I think 7% of your HP, so 1000 is like 70 HP a second, or 70 HP a hit as opposed to 60 at level 1, and that's. That's passive. That's up all the time. And, I mean, granted, they have to be at 1,000 HP, but, like, he doesn't... Again, he doesn't require, like, the use of his ultimate to do a lot of damage. He can just right-click people, and uh, he has, like, huge increased attack speed. Insatiable Hunger doesn't give you any attack speed. So, like, her, like, fighting potential is, like, greatly... Uh, just It's just pales in comparison to what someone, like... Uh, Nakes can do in a fight. She has to like be attacking someone to slow and open wounds is like a range It's like it gives you added benefits in addition to the slow and again like most other heroes can do what Brood does like a lot better if you want like a somewhat of a like a disabler and tank uh, in the middle of a fight that does like a lot of damage, you just use Nakes. If you want a split pusher, you can use Darkseer who's a lot better at surviving and does a lot more damage and has a lot more team fight potential. Um, you can also use Furion if you want like an invisible ganker and utility hero you can use bounty hunter or weaver and both of those have like very very good survivability and they have like a lot easier time like coming back in team fights because Erna Swarm is very very useful and uh, time lapse is much better survivability than web and on top of that you have you have track for bounty hunter which is way more useful than uh, just having an spin web for yourself and again the hero skill set is just not that good in competitive games this is okay for pubs because people just don't buy centuries and gem and dust all that often but again it's just very easy to zone out a brood mother it's very easy to counteract the pushing and you feed massive amounts of bounty and experience uh, and the offlane role is just better fulfilled by almost any other common current offlaner right now and until the game shifts away from 311 uh, I don't think we'll see Broodmother in it for a long time, or she needs like some significant nerfs, or some 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 significant buffs. Sorry, not nerfs, to see her used in play. She actually used to be really really popular, and she was used all the time. And you would ba actually ban the hero. I mean, banning Broodmother is. Uh, somewhat of a ridiculous concept uh, to like many of the spectators today, but she actually used to be like first band materials like oh my gosh We can't play against broodmother and one of the tournaments that I played in like in ages ago I think in 2009 we lost first broodmother and like broodmother was just considered way overpowered back then um, Webs used to give like full vision in the area of the web instead of just like this tiny tiny vision right here and there's been just like a lot of other nerfs as well. You can check one of the many sites for change logs. But until that happens, Broodmother is just like a 
uh, crappy Weaver, a crappy Nakes, like a, kind of just a crappy, <laughs> crappy mix of the two, I think. Um, not enough damage, not enough survivability, uh, not just no presence in team fights, and just a really weak o hero overall. She'd probably be placed in my bottom top ten, uh, top ten heroes for like most needs for nerf or bottom 10 heroes in terms of suckiness whatever you want however you want to phrase it but uh thanks everybody for uh watching this week's mailbag again i didn't get too many questions this week so i had to deal with what i had um what i had in my mailbox but i'm looking forward to having more questions i don't think like none of the uh like tournaments have recently seen anything like exceptionally new it's just been like more coddle pl more shadow demon nakes and bat rider and nicks so i, I think I, I tend to get a lot more questions like oh my god there's like amiibo coming around or like wow gyrocopter has been picked a lot um but i hope that there's a patch or some balance changes uh that come soon so that i have some more interesting stuff to talk about but thanks everybody for watching i will put this on youtube later and again my email is mailbag at merlinidota.com and if you have any general questions comments or concerns uh, you can mail me at merlini at merlinidota.com thanks everybody for watching